Hello everyone, welcome to episode 1 of Leaf Plays FTL Faster Than Light. If you've never heard of this game, it's uh, it's sort of a roguelike space exploration combat uh, diplomacy sort of game. It's hard to explain off the bat, so we're going to dive into a new game and hopefully you'll kind of pick things up as we go and I'll try to explain them since this is the first episode. For starting out, first we have to do is pick a ship. Now there, I have three different unlocked, and there are a bunch more that I just I haven't even gotten to yet. But to start things off, I think we're gonna go with the Kestrel. It's sort of the baseline vanilla ship that everyone starts out with. You see, I have another one here called the Taurus, and another bot called the Adjudicator, and they're both piloted by alien races called the Zoltan and the NG respectively and they each have their own special abilities different stats as far as like shields go different weapons but to start things off and keep things simple and just go with the Kestrel piloted by humans pretty boring to start off with but I think it'll give a good introduction to the game without getting into some of the more complex stuff with different races and different starting stats so, we're just going to keep it called the Kestrel, and I don't feel like renaming it just now. Maybe we'll have some fun with that down the line. You can also name your crew, but I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. So, uh, at the moment, I don't think... There's usually, like... Well, not usually. Later in the game, you'll be able to augment uh, your systems. You can click, like, Type B, and you'll get different layouts, but we don't have any of that right now. So, we're just going to start with what we have. Okay. And here's the intro of it. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure you explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. And then there's some tips. Uh, basically, the crux of the game is that you are playing as, it says, a ship in the Federation fleet. There's not, there, there's like a sense that there's an interesting backstory here, but they don't really go into detail. Essentially, there's a rebel fleet moving in on you, and you have information that you have to get to the Federations across, you know, the galaxy. So you're trying to outrun the rebel fleet the whole time, but at the same time, you can't go too fast because you have to stop and gather resources. So there's sort of a balance you have to go through. And uh, here I'll give you an idea. You start off by with the jump, and you can go to different areas on the map. So the goal is to get to the exit, and then you move on to the next sector, and there's sort of branching sector paths that we'll get to and hopefully you can make it to the Federation at the end and then once you get there you turn around and have to fight the rebel fleet. Now I've been playing the game not a whole lot enough that you know I, I know what's going on but it is very difficult even just getting to the end to and joining up with the Federation is hard because there are a lot of hazards in space like random Electrical storms and nebula, pirates, just running out of fuel and being stranded. It's its crazy. There's, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and you can die really quickly. So don't expect us to beat this game anytime soon. I've never beaten it. I've only made it to the Federation fleet once and then I died promptly after entering the fight against the rebels. Okay, so to start off with, let's just go, uh, let's see, I, all of these are unvisited, so I have no idea what goes on in any of these. It's randomly generated every time, it's never the same. So we're going to go here first, because it's getting close to the exit. I don't want to deal with up this in the nebula, because you deal with electrical storms, and it's just a bad time. So let's jump ahead, and see where we go. And of course, every time you jump, you use one fuel. Let's see. There are only two ships within range, and they seem to be engaged in battle. One of them has the markings of a space pirate. So this is where you get into sort of the diplomacy aspect. Well, sort of diplomacy, but you have these branching decisions where you can choose, like, in this case, you can aid the civilian ship and fight the pirates, in which case you go into a fight against the pirates and have to deal with that. Maybe get some loot back or get a reward from the civilian ship, or you can choose to stay out of it and say, you know, I, I don't have the resources to fight right now, I don't think we can win this, we're just going to move on. To get into things, I'm just going to go ahead and aid the civilian ship. Hopefully we can get some stuff out of it. Let's 
see. All right, power up our weapons and prepare to engage. So this is how the combat works, <clears throat> which they do in a way that I really like. I'm gonna hit continue here and then pause real quick. A really nice thing is you can pause during the fights, which helps a lot as far as planning goes. <clears throat> Okay, so to start off with, you can see what their ship has. So he's got his shields, FTL drive that allows him to move. That's where the pilot goes, weapon systems, and oxygen. And during the fight, our job is we're going to try to take out some of these systems because that'll leave parts of his ship uh, incapacitated, maybe get him to surrender, or at the very least, we'll deal damage to him. And to do that, we have two weapons here, the Artemis missile and the burst laser that we'll try to use in tandem. But to do that, we have to power them up. And this is a, something I really like about the game is the way that you have to manage all of your power systems. So at the start here, we have enough power saved up or extra power saved up that we can power up pretty much everything. FTL drive isn't at max, but it could be. We just aren't allocating resources to that right now. But you'll see at the start, while we can have everything powered up, eventually we'll get other systems or upgrade some, and we have to pick and choose which ones we want to power up. For example here, say I don't want the med bay right now, but I want to charge my FTL faster. You can reallocate power that way, or you can power down systems completely. Say, you know, you get into a jam, we are running low on ammo. You can just take all the power out of your weapons and dump it into your shields if you have empty power bars but to start here since we just have baseline stats we can power up pretty much everything and we're going to get into some of the combat but before that one more thing forgot we're going to reposition our crew so we're going to move him i think into we'll move him into weapon systems having crew in each area and the longer they're there makes them sort of level up, or at least get some skill in each area. So if we put him in the weapons area, you'll see you get 10% faster charge for being in there. So it like helps with cooldown times as far as uh, every time you shoot your weapons. And if we keep him in there, he'll get better, and our bonus for having him in there will get better as well. And this guy we're going to put in shields. And hopefully that they'll be able to specialize in those areas as we go. Uh, while they're going to be moving there, we're going to assign a late... Uh, what do we want to do here? We're going to assign a missile and try to take out their shields. Every Their shield here will take up, I think, two burst laser attacks. So we're going to try to take that out with both of these. I always like to go for shields first. We gotta wait for these to power up. I always like to go for shields first and then aim for their weapons because if you can take out both of those, then you have a good chance of winning the fight. Okay, so their shields are down now. That's what this red means. And you saw I got hit once and my shield went away, but it came back pretty quickly. That won't always be the case by any means. The shields are really something that you have to manage. I'm gonna try to upgrade those as soon as possible because missiles don't go through them and you know two or three laser shots and you're you're in trouble so now that their shields down i'm going to try to take out their weapon system i'm only using the burst laser this time because as you can see we have limited missiles but we have unlimited laser okay yeah and he's got an ion blaster i believe that takes our shields down completely and you'll see this blue flashing uh oh okay so our Oxygen's completely dead, so I'm gonna send this guy in to fix it. Send him over there, because without oxygen, our guys are gonna to start to die. And that's another thing you have to manage. You know, there's all these little bit of, like, other systems you have to manage as far as, you know, your shields, your weapons, oxygen, what their ship is going through. Even stuff like just opening and closing doors can be something you have to focus on. It, it's really about micromanagement. Oh, let's see. Okay, so I did hit their weapons system, and that's down, which is great. So I'm going to target their shield again, and then we'll just hang out. We should be able to win this one pretty easily now. Come on, burst laser. 
And you'll see while systems are damaged, they're not powered up. So you can, you're free to reuse that power as you have to. Okay, pirate ship breaks apart. You hasten contact the, phys the civilian ship. And we get a missile, one drone part, and 12 scrap, which acts as currency from the pirate ship. So let's contact the civilians. It says that the sector has become increasingly dangerous for friends of the Federation. I think my crew can patch up your hull damage. Oh, that is great. That's something that I don't get very often. They repaired our ship. We may have only been hit once, but as you'll see as the game goes on, any and all help like that it can be huge. Okay, let's see. Oxygen system's back, so we're going to move him back into the weapons, and I'm going to check out the ship. Do we have enough to upgrade anything? We can get a power bar. We can upgrade a shield. I might do that. We'll see. Or the doors. I like to upgrade like shields and door systems, stuff like that. Get a good infrastructure for long-lasting life before I worry about weapons and that sort of thing. Okay, there's a distress beacon up here, so let's go check that out. Let's see what's going on over here. Who needs help? Greetings. It is so good to see you. We've been out of fuel and floating here for weeks. We were terrified a pirate or those damn rebels would find us first. Could you spare us some fuel? Now, we have we have 14 fuel, so I'm going to give them two. Uh, let's see if they give us anything in return. Oh, we got an ion blast. Mark two. That's pretty good. We don't have the uh, power to really do much with it, but it's good to have, and that can... Both be a big help, and it can also give us some good money if we get to a shop, which there are uh, sort of stations you can get to or find where you'll be able to, oh, we have a fight coming up, where you'll be able to purchase and sell goods and hire mercenaries, you know, patch up your ship, stuff like that. Okay, so you stumble across a forward scout of the rebel fleet, so we're going to want to take this guy out. Okay, so yeah, they're probably up their FTL drive, so if they get away... The rebels are going to be getting here all the quicker. So we're going to try to take this guy out as quickly as possible. I'm going to start off by pausing again, which is what I always do. Uh-oh. Okay, here, that is a teleporter. And because it's flashing blue, I believe that means that they're about to send somebody onto my ship, which is bad. So we're going to move these guys into the med bay where they can continually heal themselves. We're going to assign... The missile launcher onto their shields, burst laser also on shields, right out the gate. And let's see what happens here. Okay, so yeah, he just got beamed aboard. Now what you can do is you can send your men to fight him, which is all well and good, but then they run the risk of dying. Or you can do what I like to do and just sort of open up these doors and see if you can choke them out. Although, I really hope that he doesn't... Oh, no, okay, he got... He didn't want to have to go through the lack of oxygen in there. So, yeah, if you open up these doors, your oxygen levels drop really quickly. But at the same time, it's more likely that they'll die, too. Of course, as I say that, we're running into a lot of trouble here. We got a fire now, which, again, fire needs oxygen. So, if we open up that door, it should be put out. Okay, now they're going after our shields. I don't like that. But we're in a pretty good... Sp oh, we missed with the... We missed with our missile. Okay, I'm going to go back there. See if we can... Oh, did he die? Oh, he must have died. Hey, works for me. We'll just go close all doors. And then I'm going to open these interior ones, which I think should help uh, the oxygen spread. Oh, wait, no, there's just an open all door thing. There we go. And then, who's our weapons guy? That'd be you, I think. I forget. They haven't had much time to specialize just yet. So he's going to fix up our weapons. And then we should be able to get our burst laser back online. And, of course, always keep up the pressure with these missiles. I don't usually like to rely on the Artemis too much, because... You know, you only have so many missiles, but in this case, I feel like it's warranted. You know, we're just trying to stay alive. Oh, missed. Oh, and they got away. That's not good. Okay, so we're going to want to get out of here as quickly as possible. 
well, once we're once we're stopped here, nobody's gonna show up. But we're gonna try to get out of this area. Yep, here's the the warning. So this is the like very beginning part of the rebel fleet. More is definitely coming. All right, let's see what's going on here. You discover a nearby planet speckled with settlements, although none respond to your hails. Okay, so they have. Well, it looks kind of like a nice place at night, but they're not interested in us, so we're not interested in them. Moving on to the store. And this is what I was talking about before, Reed. There's certain stations where you can purchase supplies, fix yourself up, which I'm going to do. Fix for four. Go to sell, and I think I'm going to sell the Ion Blaster, because we're not really going to use that, I don't think. We don't have the resources to allocate to it just yet. And in exchange, I could buy stealth weapons. What's that do? Prevent your weapon fire from disrupting your cloak. Oh, well, I, we don't have stealth. Let's see. Drone control, crew teleporter, cloak. I'm going to have enough for any of those. So I'm going to do, get a couple missiles. Oh, I bought all of their missiles, I guess. Get some fuel. And close that down. Then we're going to go and upgrade our ship. I'm thinking shields to start out with. No, you know what? Blast doors to start out with. And then some shields. Now that's not going to do much for us. It will mean that we have blast doors now. So when enemies beam aboard, they'll have to shoot their way through each door. That'll make, or that'll make it easier for us to deal with them. And then we have one extra sheet. I'm sorry. One extra shield slot, that's hard to say, which will, <coughs> sorry, which doesn't do anything for us right now, but once we get that second one, let me see here, when we upgrade again, you'll see that at, for an extra 30, we'll get two shield bars, so we'll get an extra uh, slot up here and stronger shields. We'll need 30 more scrap to do that, but it's good to start that out now. We're just going to move on to the exit. Now, sometimes there are conditions for the exit. Well, you're, you'll are you have to have a fight, but it looks like... Oh, here's something. There's a black market hub here. You receive a message. These are dangerous times. If you have the extra military-grade explosives, we'll gladly pay for them. So we could sell five missiles for 15 scrap, but that would be all of our missiles. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to say, no, thank you, sir, and we'll move on. So here's how the sector map works. You get You always get a choice of where you want to go next. You can go to an uncharted nebula, which who knows what's going to happen there. Or you can go to a rebel-controlled sector where, you know, probably bad news, lots of fighting. <clears throat> I think we're going to go to the rebel-controlled sector. I hate the nebulas. There's just electrical storms, and a lot of times you're, a lot of, you're like, your systems are offline. It's, and, of course, we got to a nebula anyway. <laughs> all right, well, all right. Let's see here, between the tactical and military bases, rebel presence in sector is high. And this danger means to look out, you're in a nebula. Okay, so it's a small one. Nebulas tend to house electrical storms that I don't want to deal with. Weapons go offline, you can't see anything, it's a, it's a mess. A rebel ship moves to engage. You attempt to open communications, but realize the futility of that action when you see the ship is run by an AI. Now this is definitely a good thing. AI controlled ships usually don't have shields, they don't have pilots, they don't have oxygen, they just really have the weapon systems for us to shoot for. Let's see here. Oh, it's gonna try to get away and warn the fleet, so we're just gonna go ahead and start peppering his weapon systems and hopefully take those offline before he can do too much damage to us. But once that's done, they have no other recourse. They don't have any shields to protect themselves. Okay, so their weapons are offline. Ours are damaged, but not too bad. That should be fixed up pretty soon. And hopefully we can take care of this guy pretty quickly. I'd like to get this burst laser back online so I wouldn't have to... Yes, there we go. So I don't have to waste our missiles, because we only have three left, and I definitely feel more comfortable if we had more. Uh-oh, he's leaving. Get that first laser in. Yes, all right, destroyed him. So we should pick up some scrap from this. Yeah, 11 scrap, a drone part, and two missiles. The drone parts, we won't be able to use 
this round, but you can buy, some ships start out with them, but you could also, if you're lucky, purchase little drone robots to sort of fly around and help you out. Let's go to this distress beacon. Hello, we used our last FTL fuel to jump to the station. They indicate a burnt out husk of debris and warped metal. As you can see, the war must have spread to this sector. We've been stranded ever since. Now, we have seven fuel, which isn't a whole lot. I know it might seem like a lot now, or at least adequate amounts, but that can go very quickly. And they're asking for almost half. So that's kind of a big decision. This could help us out a lot. It could also hurt us a lot. You know, I'm feeling generous though. I'm gonna give them the fuel. Let's see what we get. Thank you so much. We don't have much to offer, but have a look at the sector scans we took. Okay, so we got an updated map, which could be really good. I'm guessing, I actually haven't had this before, but it looks like these, okay, possible ship detected. So we'll probably want to avoid those if we want to survive. So let's go to the store. Probably a good thing anyway, because we're hurting for fuel since we gave away a whole bunch. All right, anything here? Not really. So we're just gonna buy up all the fuel we can and fix it one slot. We don't have enough to fix it all the way, but that should be good for now. Let's just move on. Let's see, we might have a fight coming up here. Yep, and it's another scout, which, as we've seen before, shouldn't be too much of a problem. This time, I'm going to hit their weapons and the FTL at the same time. See if we can knock out two birds with one stone. Oh, these guys have an ion blaster. Oh, our FTL drive got hit, but that doesn't look like it's going to be an issue. Getting hit with an ion blaster you'll notice doesn't actually hurt us. It just takes our systems offline for a little bit. Which, if you use that in tandem with a missile launcher, it can be really effective, but in this case, it didn't really do much to us. And we got 18 scrap, two missile, and one fuel, which is pretty good. Just go to the exit. Let's see here. You have to drive the gauge, jump to the next sector. All right. You see a small station fitted with hundreds of repair drones. You receive an automated message. We don't know who you are, and we don't care, but this is the right place for some ship repair. Not a bad slogan. I'm not going to bother with it, though, because we're only hurt one, and we don't have a lot of scrap. So we're just going to say, no thank you, sir, and we'll move on to the next sector. Okay, here we have NG-controlled sector, or the NG homeworlds, and NG are friendly. That's what the green is, civilian, they're good guys. We're gonna go to the home worlds. There's also, once we get into these uh, areas where we're in alien territory, you have the potential to pick up alien crew members, which can have their own special abilities. <coughs> Sorry. And let's see, what's going on here? You have a ride in NG space, the Mantis has been threatening the NG core worlds, should be able to stock up for your journey. Okay, the Mantis and the NG are fighting each other. Mantis, if I remember correctly, have really good melee damage. So, if, like, they're good fighters, and the NG are really good at fixing things. And I don't think they need oxygen, if I remember correctly. But, who knows. We might pick one of them up. I'm not sure. Oh, what's going on here? This guy's got a lot of stuff. Let's see, cockpit lights up with warning signals. You're being targeted by a nearby ship. The distress call was a lure to attract unwitting ships into weapons range. We prepare to fight. Now this, I'm a little worried about because he's got a lot of systems and twice as many shields as we're used to dealing with. So we're gonna hit continue. We're gonna pause immediately while we kind of get our bearings. I think I'm gonna drop a missile on the shields. Just sort of go this standard route. See, this is a Mantis fighter, so, and they can beam guys aboard. So we're probably gonna have to fight them at the same time we're fighting the ship. Let's see. Yeah, burst laser on the shields too. We're gonna try to take those out as soon as possible. All right, detector aboard. Is that an, that's an NG, I think. Which 
is strange. But... Yeah, an Angie and a human, you, you usually don't get those on the Mantis ships. We're gonna move these guys into the med bay, and we're gonna pop open some doors. And hopefully, choke them out before they can do too much damage. Although our, yep, that's damage, but that's, that's just our sensors, so that's not the biggest problem we have. Oh, we have a fire in the med bay, and it's gone down. That, that is a problem. And they're going after our shields, I think, so... Yeah, we're in trouble. We're in some trouble here. I think we, we might be able to still pull ourselves out of it. Looks like they're trying to get through this door. I don't even know what that was. Okay, the shields are down. That is great. Alright, and it's trying to escape, so that puts us in a good position. They're trying to get away. Let's just start peppering their weapon systems. And this kind of demonstrates in the game how quickly things can go downhill. Now we didn't... Oh, alright. They're ready to surrender. So we can accept the offer. One missile, one fuel, and 16 scrap, which is pretty good. We're just going to take it because we want the fight to end. Let's see. We're going to get a guy in here to fix the sensors. We'll send another guy to... Oh, I should close the doors. What am I doing? Okay, we'll have him fix up our weapon systems and the FTL drive because can we okay we can still leave but it's best to get that fixed as soon as possible all right sensors back online that's good what is this guy's specialty weapons put him back over here you can go fix the FTL and we'll lock all the doors up tight oh and now we have enough scrap let's go to our ship here and upgrade the shields one more time. Which should... There we go. Now we'll have two shield bars. Which is always good in a firefight. We might have to power down some of our uh, less important systems if we get into a fight to power up a burst laser. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Let's make a beeline for the exit. We don't have a lot of scrap. We don't have a lot of fuel. And we found another fight. Okay, this is... Oh, man, they have drones, missiles. They can't beam anybody aboard, at least. So that's one less thing to deal with, but... Oh, this, this could be tricky. We're going to power down the med bay for now. And we're going to power down the FTL. And we're going to use those to go into the burst laser. So we'll have a better chance of winning this fight. And... As always, we're just going to start off by trying to take their shields offline. You know, I'm going to have a missile going to their shields and the burst laser on their weapons. Let's see how this turns out. Looks like they have an... What is that? An anti... Um... Missile drone, I think. Yep, so it's shooting our missiles out of the sky. That's definitely a bad thing. We can't target it either, but we can target the drone control systems try to take that offline so let's do that kind of hurting pretty bad here oh I'm so paused <laughs> didn't realize okay looks like our shields are all right let's see oh, God. well now we're now we're getting hurt let's drop a missile oh of course I I'm an idiot. Missile wasn't going to land anyway. You can sometimes get missiles past those drones, but it's tricky. And now we have a fire. This is definitely bad news. We might as well just try it. Oh, and it's got away. Well, I can't say we won that fight, but we made it out alive. He's getting hurt real bad. Let's get him out of there. We'll just pop these doors open. And the fire should sort of take care of itself. We'll also power up our med bay and our FTL drive and get ready to go as soon as this fire is put out. There's one, and there's the other. Awesome. Let's lock up these doors, open those up. How, how are you for health? Fine. Put you back in the shields then, and then you can come over here and get healed. If a... Uh, 
crew member is in a room that gets hit, they take damage as well as the ship, so that's what happened to this guy. Which he should be, yep, 100 health. Let's move him back and get ready to go. We're doing really badly for fuel and not great for health. Buy one fuel for two scrap. You know what? We need fuel, and I don't know when we'll be able to get some next, so... Oh, well, there's a store. We didn't have enough anyway. Let's just go to the exit. I thought about going to the store, but we don't really have enough resources to do anything there. Find a mercenary ship for hire at this beacon. Their unique skills can sometimes provide useful. So we can choose to fight the ship, because we don't have enough money to hire them. But we don't want to do that, so we'll just say no thank you and move on. Next sector. Now, the only choice we have here is a pirate-controlled sector, which is kind of the wild card. Pirates aren't necessarily trying to hunt us down, but they're always up for a fight. That being said, sometimes you have good luck with pirates because a lot of them are slave traders, and you can sometimes pick up... Ooh. Let's see. You can sometimes pick up extra crew members, which I think is what's going on here. Especially well-armed pirate ship approaches you. Hand over one of your crew members and the rest of you can go free unharmed. So, we only have three crew members. I don't want to have to give one up. On the other hand, look at this thing. It has crazy shields. And we're hurting pretty bad. Although, I'm going to say right now, looking at our lack of fuel, I think we're pretty much done. I don't see us really getting much farther into this game. Let's just go out and fight. Just because with no fuel in a pirate controlled sector, you can float around with a distress beacon, but that's just going to bring more pirates and we're probably going to get destroyed. So this is going to be our last stand, I think. See, who, where do we want to drop this even? I guess on shields, because they got a lot of them. So we'll start by trying to take their shields offline. And to just see how things go. Come on, guys, power up. So they're launching their missiles, and it lands in oxygen. Yep, we're hurting bad. At least the laser can't break through our shields. Although, that's not a lot of consolation, given the amount of damage we're taking. Okay, well, we weren't using our med bay anyway. Oh, let's get you back over here. Wait a minute. Hang on. Why can't I power this up? Oh, I'm out of missiles. I didn't even realize. Yeah, we're screwed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're, we're definitely screwed. We could try to escape, but I don't think we really have the time. Yeah, we, we can barely even break through their, mis or their shields. Uh, we have a crack in the hull that he's trying to fix. Oh yeah, we're dead. Two cracks in the hull. We're losing oxygen. Our mis yeah, we're dead. <laughs> There's nothing we can do here. Everything's going offline. This demonstrates how quickly a game of this, oh, one crew's dead, how the game can really just go to hell in a handbasket with a couple bad decisions. Score is 446. I have no idea what that means. One last explosion marks your fate as your ship is torn apart. A sad end for our noble crew. But, anyway... That is FTL Faster Than Light, first episode, so uh, we'll see how long this series goes. Hopefully we can have some better luck next time. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also follow me at HollowedLeafLP on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.